An Open Letter to Open-Minded Progressives by Mencia Smolberg Chapter 1 A Horizon Made of Canvas Are you an open-minded progressive? Maybe not, but you probably have friends who are. This is for them. Perhaps it can serve as a sort of introduction to this strange blog, Unqualified Reservations. If you are an open-minded progressive, you are probably not a Catholic, if you are, you probably don't take the Pope too seriously. Imagine writing an open letter to Catholics, suggesting ways for them to free their minds from the insidious grip of Rome. That sort of thing is quite out of style these days. And in any case, how would you start? But here at UR, we are never afraid of being out of style. And as for starting, we already have. Is being a progressive like being a Catholic? Why shouldn't it be? Each is a way of understanding the world through a set of beliefs. These beliefs may be true. They may be false. They may be nonsense which does not even make enough sense to be false. As an open-minded progressive or an open-minded Catholic, you would like to think all the beliefs you hold are true, but you are willing to reevaluate them, perhaps with a little gentle assistance. There is one big difference between Catholicism and progressivism. Catholicism is what we call a religion. Its core beliefs are claims about the spirit world, which no Catholic, except of course the Pope, has experienced firsthand. Whereas progressive beliefs tend to be claims about the real world, about government, history, economics, and society. These are phenomena which, unlike the Holy Trinity, we all experience firsthand. Or do we? Most of us have never worked for a government and those of us who have have seen only some tiny corner of one. History is something out of a book. It isn't the Bible, but it might as well be. What is our personal experience of economics, gasoline prices, and so on? Unless your life has been both long and quite unusual, I suspect your memory shed very little light on the great questions of government, history, etc. Mine certainly don't. Of course, much of progressive thought claims to be a product of pure reason. Is it? Thomas Aquinas derived Catholicism from pure reason. John Rawls derived progressivism from pure reason. At least one of them must have made a mistake. Maybe they both did. Have you checked their work? One bad variable will bust your whole proof. And is this really how it happened? Are you a progressive because you started by believing in nothing at all? We are nihilists, we believe in nothing. Thought it through and wound up a progressive. Of course, I can't speak for your own experience, but I suspect that either you are a progressive because your parents were progressives or you were converted by some book, teacher, or other intellectual experience. Note this is exactly how one becomes a Catholic. There is one difference, though. To be a Catholic, you have to have faith, because no one has ever seen the Holy Ghost. To be a progressive, you have to have trust because you believe that your worldview accurately reflects the real world, as experienced not just by your own small eyes, but by humanity as a whole. But you have not shared humanity's experience. You have only read, heard, and seen a corpus of text, audio, and video compiled from it. And compiled by whom? Which is where the trust comes in. More on this in a little bit. I'm not a progressive, but I was raised as one. I live in San Francisco, I grew up as a foreign service brat. I went to Brown. I've been brushing my teeth with Tom of Maine since the mid-80s. What happened to me is that I lost my trust. David Marmot lost his trust too. His Village Voice essay is worth reading, if just for the shock value of the world's most famous playwright declaring that he's no longer a brain-dead liberal. There are about 500 comments on the article. Perhaps I missed one, but I didn't notice any in which the commenter claimed that Marmot had opened his eyes. Of course, Marmot is Marmot. He's out to shock, not convert. Even the word liberal, at least as it refers to a present-day political persuasion, borders on hate speech. It's like an ex-Catholic explaining why I'm no longer a brain-dead papist. John Stuart Mill was a liberal. Barack Obama is a progressive, and so are you. Basic rule of politeness. Don't call people names that don't call themselves. Worse, Mama doesn't just reject progressivism. He endorses conservatism. Dear God, talk about making your problems harder. Imagine you live in a country in which everyone is one of two things, a Catholic or a Hindu. 
Isn't it hard enough to free a man's mind from the insidious grip of Rome? Must he accept Kali, Krishna, and Ganesha at the same time? For example, Mahmud endorses the conservative writer Thomas Sowell, who he claims is our greatest contemporary philosopher. Well, I like Thomas Sowell. His work is certainly not without value, but really. And if you Google him, you will see that his columns frequently appear on a conservative website called townhall.com. Click that link. Observe the atrocious graphic design. Have you noticed how far above the rest Obama's graphic design is? Some font designers have. Observe the general horribleness so reminiscent of Fox News. Then head back. Or I don't know, read an Ann Coulter column or something, dear Lord. I'm not a progressive, but I'm not a conservative either. If you must know, I'm a Jacobite. Over time, I have acquired the ability to process American conservative thought, if generally somewhat upmarket from Fox News or townhall.com. This is an extremely acquired taste, if taste is even the word. It's probably very similar to the way Barack Obama handled the Reverend Wright's more colorful sermons. When David Marmite points his readers in the general direction of townhall.com, it's sort of like explaining to your uncle, who's a little bit phobic, that he can understand the value of gay rights by watching this great movie. It's called 120 Days of Sodom. It's not actual communication. It's a fuck you. It's Marmite. But many people will think exactly this. If you stop being a progressive, you have to become a conservative. I suspect that the primary emotional motivation for most progressives is that they're progressives because they think something needs to be done about conservatives. Game over. Got a ball. Right back to the insidious grip. Where does this idea that if NPR is wrong, Fox News must be right come from? They can't both be right because they contradict each other. But couldn't they both be wrong? I don't mean slightly wrong. I don't mean each half is right and each half is wrong. I don't mean the truth is somewhere between them. I mean neither of them has any consistent relationship to reality. Let's think about this for a second. As a progressive, you believe, you must believe, that conservatism is a mass delusion. What an extraordinary thing. A hundred plus million people, many quite dull but some remarkably intelligent, all acting under a kind of mass hypnosis. We take this for granted. We are used to it. But we have to admit, that it's really, really weird. What you have to believe is that conservatives have been systematically misinformed. They're not stupid, at least not all of them, nor are they evil. You can spend all the time you want on townhall.com and you will not find anyone cackling like Gollum over their evil plan to enslave and destroy the world. They all think, just like you, that by being conservatives, they're standing up for what's sweet and good and true. Conservatism is a theory of government held by a large number of people who have no personal experience of government. They hold this theory because their chosen information sources, such as Fox News, Townhall.com, and their local megachurch, feed them a steady diet of facts, and possibly a few non-facts, which tend to support, reinforce, and confirm the theory.